Today's project is a 2006 Ford F-350 King Ranch with a 6-liter diesel. It's kicking up an engine code P0470, an exhaust back pressure sensor. Here's a picture of the culprit. The exhaust back pressure sensor is on the left hand side. It's attached to a stainless steel tube that's connected to the exhaust manifold. The code is generated when the tube gets plugged with a hard carbon buildup from the exhaust manifold. The sensor is located beneath the coolant reservoir. So logically, the coolant reservoir is the first thing that should be removed. However, I devised a method to remove the tube and sensor without disconnecting or removing any other parts. The first step is to loosen the flare nut using a crow's foot or a cutaway socket and a long extension. Because the crow's foot has no depth stop, it would continuously slip past the flare nut and onto the pipe nipple. After some research, I came up with a part number for a 16 millimeter cutaway socket from Snap-on. It's an FRX M16. The cost is approximately $60, but it fits as though it's a specially designed tool for the application. It aligns quickly and easily with the flare nut and has a built-in depth stop. It needs no universal or swivel. The next step is to remove the nut from the clamp beneath the reservoir. With the clamp removed, the line can be pulled down and the electrical plug can be disconnected. With the selection of tools I outlined, this can be done in less than 15 minutes. I clamp the flare nut in a bench vise and remove the sensor with a 1 inch socket. You could also clamp the sensor in the bench vise and remove the flare nut with a flare nut tubing wrench. The line and the sensor are both plugged with a tar-like carbon buildup from the exhaust. The line is less expensive, so it was my guinea pig. I cleaned it first to test my method. I soaked the carbon with a Linux tapping oil and it dissolved the carbon quickly and easily and it flowed out the end of the tube. I reamed the tube with a flexible multi-strand copper wire. I cleaned the sensor by hand with a drill bit, using the flutes to extract the softened gooey buildup. After removing the bulk of the waste, I cleaned it with Q-tips and more tapping oil. Then I flushed the sensor and the tube with denatured alcohol. I used an air gun to blow out the line, but not the sensor. The flare nut was rusted solid to the tube and needed to be replaced, but the dealer had none in stock, so I placed it on order and freed it up with oil and a wrench. While cleaning the threads with a wire brush and a drill, I noticed the threads were damaged, so I tapped the threads with a 3 8 inch pipe tap. Be sure to inspect and clean the old pipe nipple before installing the line. Using my cell phone, I took a zoomed image of the pipe nipple on the exhaust manifold and found the threads were stripped. I removed the pipe nipple with a long extension, an impact socket, and a cordless impact driver. If you need a new one, here's the part number. The Ford dealer had the pipe nipple in stock, so I tested the fit on the old line as I waited for the new one to arrive. I clamped the flare nut in a vise, and I torqued the nipple to specifications. It held without stripping, so I decided to install it temporarily as I waited for the line to arrive. The upper flare nut was not affected by the heat, so I pre-installed the sensor and clamped it in the bench vise and torqued it to 9 foot-pounds. The factory service manual calls out this high temperature anti-seize grease for the exhaust manifold bolts and fittings. This will make removal the next time much easier. I applied the anti-seize compound to the male threads of the nipple and the female threads of the flare nut. This was much easier than reaching down to the exhaust manifold. 
To prevent the nipple from falling out of the socket when I reached it down to the exhaust manifold, I put a small strip of electrical tape on the outside that allowed it to fit snugly in the socket. The most important feature of the swivel is that it stays put because it's spring-loaded from the inside. This was really helpful. It maintained the alignment of the pipe nipple with the exhaust manifold at the end of a long extension. The spring-loaded impact swivel allowed the nipple to align with the threads in the exhaust manifold, although I did reach down with the other hand to ensure it was straight as I rotated the extension carefully. Once I was satisfied that it was in and not cross-threaded, I slowly turned it with a ratchet and then torqued it to 22 foot-pounds. To begin installing the line, I reached up and grabbed the sensor connector and slipped the line up to the connector and plugged it in. The next step was to swing the line over and attach the lower flare nut to the nipple. With the flare nut loosely installed, align the clamp and install the nut. Torque the line clamp to 10 foot-pounds. I also used the impact swivel with a 16 millimeter flare nut crow's foot to install the lower tubing nut. The last step is to tighten and torque the flare nut to the nipple to 22 foot-pounds. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Please like and share, and as always, subscribers are always welcome.